I'd love to be able to share with you some stories about the humor that I believe is there in God, and I hope you could credit God with having a sense of humor. But at any rate, these come out of a time when for something like 15 years I was involved in street ministry in Savannah off and on in the, in the historic district. And in the early stages, I was really green at this. I didn't know what I was doing. And I couldn't say towards the end that I really knew a whole lot better. I was just more practiced and experienced. But I had a woman in my office one day whose life was just a wreck. And as, as we quickly got into it, I always felt like, well, if they're coming to see me about money, then it gives me an opportunity to get into their life, give them a little advice, and maybe help them to see a step that they're missing or something like that. And so I was, I was, I was just asking her. She was only too ready, willing to tell me about this child in jail and this child, you know, having trouble in this way. And so all around her is a sea of drowning people as, as well as herself in in difficult straits, and I, and I came over and I grabbed her hands and I said, you know what we've got to do? We've just got to pray right now. And she, she looked at me in earnest and she said, preacher, I don't need prayer. I need cash. And I just broke out laughing. And I said, lady, you're going to get cash. I let go of her hands. I don't even know if I ended up praying for her. I just went over to my desk and wrote her out a check to help her out. I was kind of remembering Jesus with the Cyrus Phoenician woman where, you know, she's pestering him, pestering me, saying, lady, this isn't for you, but finally gave it to her because of her persistence. And I just loved, there was something about her moxie in that moment. It just, you know, I just had to, had to let her have her way. Now, there was another time. Uh, I walked in, I was visiting an elderly woman in our parish, and, um, and she had, as often happens, she had a sitter with her. And when I walked in, the sitter just folded up something that was in her lap, and I felt like the, um, that the Lord was, was saying to me, that's the lottery she's working on. And he wasn't saying it in a mean way, he was just letting me know. And um, so I filed that, and I went over and I spent some time talking with the parishioner. I said hi to her, I went over and talked to the parishioner. And then to just make it a longer visit and draw this other woman in, I got to talking with her. And I said, you know, I noticed you were working on, on something when I came in. Tell me, was that the lottery? And she got real sheepish, and she admitted, yes, it was. And I said, well, are you a believer? And she said, yes. And I said, well, you know, God would really like us to, you know, just, I believe he'd like us to, you know, like, earn our money, save our money, and then and build, a, you know, an income a, and build, you know, build our life up along those lines. And that this get rich quick stuff with the lottery, it's just, it's just robbing you of money and um, that's really probably not the way to go. And if, and if you think that's the case, let's pray about this because this is a wonderful opportunity. I mean, we could say, God, and, and she was saying, yeah, I, you know, I really realize I, I don't need to be doing this and all of that. So she was tracking with me. Um, and she was getting, getting a vision that she didn't need to be wasting her money on the lottery. So I said, well, let's do this. Let's just say, Lord, if you want her to have this lottery, then here's an opportunity. But if you don't and you'd like her to know not to do the lottery, then why don't you just like don't let it happen and she'll know. So it's like, okay, this is a really cheap prayer because it's a fleece. But I felt like I was giving the Lord a pass in the end zone. I mean, the odds are against her winning. That very Sunday, like three or four days later, the family members come up to me after church and they said, wow, I'm so glad you visited so-and-so. And, -so. and um, that sitter, by the way, she wants your name and number. Would it be okay to give it to her? I said, well, why? She said, she wants you to pray for her again. She won the lottery. She won about $500 or something. And I go like, God, I gave you a pass in the end zone. I don't understand. You know, and, and to this day, I don't understand, except that maybe he doesn't want me to pray cheap prayers like that and just instruct people in what would be a better way. But maybe he just likes dropping a blessing in on people unexpectedly. Well, there was an unexpected blessing and moment that happened. This is my third story. Um, coming, in, coming out of kind of uh, on my ministry days in downtown Savannah. And I was taking a fellow out to get some shoes. And I mean, this is a really big guy. I hadn't seen him before. He'd come into the soup kitchen. And um, just really squirrely with stuff. And he was talking about all kinds of things a mile a minute. We're walking down Main Street towards the shoe store. And coming our way, I, I saw, and then I looked away, because I saw a woman coming our way that, um, I don't know for sure she was a street woman, that, you know, but I mean, she had the walk of it. And 
the, it just, you could just about hear the drum beats in your ears. It was like there was a boom box playing, just, just catching that glimpse of her. And so I, I had my eyes back on this, my tall friend who's walking beside me. And I saw him, was, I'm trying to keep on a conversation going with him about what we're doing. And I saw him while he's listening to me, he's just following her every kaboom, kaboom, kaboom until, you know, about 10, yard, you know, 10 feet behind us. And when he finally turned back around, I'm still talking on the regular vein. And when he turned back around, I, I said, yeah, I saw that too. And, and, he, and he just like stopped the road. And he turned and he said, you saw that? I said, well, yeah, I'm a man. I saw it. He said, well, you didn't look. I said, I'm, I'm a Christian man. I've trained my eyes not to look at that. I, I look away. That's what I do. I'm a married man, so I look away. And, and you know, that one moment right there opened up this person's life to hearing the gospel in such an incredible way. Um, a uh, half a dozen blocks later, we were standing in an alley, and he was asking Jesus Christ into his life. <laughs> My friends, if you don't know the Lord, what's it going to take? <laughs> but uh, those of you that, that may know the Lord, I just have a verse to pin with these stories, where Jesus said in John chapter 14, it's, it's John chapter 15, he said, you're my friends if you do whatever I command you to do, if you walk with me, if you follow me, if you... Walk in my ways, you're my friends. And then he says in verse 15, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all the things I heard from my Father, I've made known to you. What a wonderful thing to feel this friendship with this supernatural divine being who's so much fun, who sees into other people's lives, who brings you into their lives, who creates splendid moments and opportunities when we're open to him. Wow, if you'd like to learn more, and especially about how to get your own heart and life released from burdens you may be carrying so that you can walk with a lot more joy with this great friend, why don't you come to healingstreamsusa.org and see what friendship with Jesus, where that would take you.